sponsored by Bellman Electronics. Hi, I'm Lee Teschler, Executive Editor of Design World. A lot of power supplies, both DC and AC, have what's called fold-back short circuit protection on their output. This is a special kind of protection technique that differs from ordinary short circuit protection or current limiting. In a short video, we'll explain how fold-back protection differs from ordinary current limiting. The difference between the two types is most easily explained by looking at a graph of supply output voltage versus output current. During normal operation of the power supply, the voltage remains constant as output current varies. With normal current limiting, there's a hard limit on the amount of current the supply delivers. As the load resistance approaches zero, the current is limited to a fixed value. Once the current exceeds the maximum allowed, the voltage drops, but the current remains, as is evident on the graph at the left part of the diagram. This drop in voltage with a high current draw may cause damage to the power supply circuit itself because at that point the supply is dissipating a lot of power internally. In some cases that condition can damage a power supply. This contrasts with what happens with foldback protection, which is displayed on the graph at the right. Here as the voltage drops, the current limit also drops fairly linearly. The name foldback comes from the shape of the resulting graph of voltage versus current, which looks a little like a wave about to curl over onto itself. Basically, when the supply puts out a current that exceeds the maximum value, the voltage still drops, but the current drops simultaneously to a safe value. Foldback facilities provide better protection from circuits as a really bad short will result in very little current draw. So the supply won't be sitting there heating up while it puts out maximum current. In DC power sources, the foldback current protection is also much more important for linear supplies than for switching supplies. Linear supplies dissipate more power as the difference between their input and output voltage rises. Because of this, when the supply hits a current limit and the output voltage begins to drop, that forces a bigger difference between the input and the output voltage. Power dissipation rises even if the current is held constant and that can cause the supply to exceed its thermal limits. Switching supplies don't have this relationship. Now for more videos, go to powerelectronictips.com and designworldonline.com. Coach, Earl, one more time. All right. Now for more videos, go to powerelectronictips.com and designworldonline.com.